Hey guys, welcome back to the Films 128 channel. In this episode, I took out my old Hikari camera. Oh, this wonderful, wonderful camera. My first ever fully manual camera, real camera, SLR. Um, I bought it when I first started college back in, oh my god, I'm old. 2001. I started college in 2000. 2001, I took a photography course. Um, best time ever. I loved that class. I loved learning about photography. I loved processing my own film and making prints. I mean, it, the darkroom stuff. Oh man, it was awesome. But I bought this camera. I needed a camera for the class and uh, went into a photography shop. Probably got overcharged. Spent about $250 on this guy. Came with the one lens from 28 to 70. And uh, totally manual. I mean, nothing in there. It's got a light meter, but other than that, everything is manual from the shutter to the aperture. There's no auto controls at all on this thing. You know, you wind, damn you, you wind the film when you're done. You know, you advance the film manually. This is a great camera. This was such an awesome camera. Behind the scenes, though, is that this is actually the second attempt with this camera because the first attempt everything came back really blown out and destroyed it was like the light meter went to hell like multiple stops above what I actually needed everything came back super blown out just really washed out ugly shots and I never had that happen now I haven't used it in about 10 years or so so, what I thought maybe happened was that the batteries in there were probably going bad, seeing as they haven't done anything in 10 years, and I probably should have checked them and changed them first. So, uh, I think I actually showed at the beginning of the episode, I put some new batteries, new watch batteries in the bottom there, and uh, see if the light meter is showing me different stuff. Basically, my test was, I took it out, I looked, light meter's still working, we're good to go, and I shot. I guess if the batteries are going, the light meter is going to not give you correct information. So, lesson learned. Um, but this was the second attempt with this camera, hoping that there was nothing actually wrong with it. It was just the light meter was goofed because of bad batteries. So, we'll cut to the vlog part. Uh, loaded up a Arista EDU 200 for the old Hikari. And so we will be right back after I show you that blog part. We'll come back, see what I got, and see if anything needs to jump into Photoshop. Really? So, the other thing that's weird with this camera is it's the Hikari 2002. Um, which I love it. Fully manual. Everything on it is manual. There's nothing automatic about this camera. I'm trying to think if there's something. No. There was a mechanical timer on it, which broke. Other than that, everything else works, or I thought worked, until I've been shooting it lately and everything's been either under or overexposed, hazy, you know, so I really cleaned the camera thoroughly and replaced the batteries and I'm hoping it's okay. But what's weird about this camera is I bought it when I started college and I had a photography course and I probably overpaid for it like $250 in a photography shop and it was in 2000 late 2000 maybe early 2001 but everything I read about this says it came out in 2002 so I don't know how I got it in 2000 2001 if it didn't come out till 2002 but that's the weird thing with this little guy other than that it's treated me nice over these years the end. Other thing is not cool. Like I said, about two hundred fifty dollars in a photography shop. I, it probably was marked up pretty well. It was a small store, so I'm sure it was a good markup. But I saw it online from a Goodwill site for ten dollars. It was so sad. Well, here's open. Still rolling? Mm -hmm. What's neat about this, and even my favorite camera, the T70, 
which can go automatic and can go totally manual, is that even the winding of the film is totally manual on this and it has a double exposure button so you can re-trigger the shutter without moving the film so you can do it creative double exposure if you want, which is unique. I can't find that on it like most cameras. I'll try something. What I just said about the double exposure. So I just took a very underexposed shot. Like it should have been f3.4, I went all the way to f22, so really underexposed shot of the sidewalk path. And now I'm gonna do the double expose button so that the film doesn't move. Maybe take a shot of the sky, I don't know. Double expose. A path in the cloud. So we'll see what happens there. Focus is crisp, so they come back blurry. Hmm. I don't know what to do. Nope. Not gonna do it. I had a slower ISO film. I wanted to go really slow shutter speed and see if all of that stuff would just be this smear of yellow. Well, it'd be black and white, you know what I mean? But I could only get down to, I think it was like a six, 60th of a second. It probably didn't smear too much. Kind of ran out of stuff to shoot where I was. It was boring me. So I'm back to where the trains were from a few episodes back. And finish out the roll here. And this door is interesting. Okay. So all in all, not the greatest shots coming back from this damn camera. Uh, I'm still having some weird metering issues. I don't know if the light meter is just goofed at this point or what the deal is. Um, it doesn't feel like there's any issues with the shutter. The There's definitely no light leaks. So some of the shots are coming back nice. Some of them are coming back as if I've never you know metered for a shot in my life. Again, that was the double exposure shot. So you can, you can see the kind of fun you can have with double exposures. Um, this is the only camera I have that can do that. I'm gonna real quick bring this one in. Oh, oh, 007. See this one just with a little bit of a quick tone fix. It's kind of a nice shot. 
I wonder what that would look like if I just do a quick adjustment on that. Let's look at eight. And let's fit to the screen, please. Quick tone adjust. Almost did everything I needed it to do. Uh, let's look at curves, just see if I can adjust it slightly. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at that. Standing out. See? There's the camera. Hey, you're not dead after all. I was getting worried. That's a pretty shot. That's a cool shot, too. Let me take that in real quick. There we are. Let's take a look at curves. Not too much, not too much. I like that. What is this business up here? What that is? Let's take a look. What is that? Just some shenanigans on my on my image. Give me my stamp tool. Near, 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 near. Never happened. There you go. Y'all don't even understand what it's like. Like right now, I thought this camera might have some serious issues. I was getting really worried. So to get anything out of it, I feel a little better. Because I've had a few issues lately with cameras. Here's a thought, don't aim at the sun. But I've, I've been having some issues with my cameras lately. That one just needs an adjust in Photoshop. Like the AE-1 with some massive light leaks, having to redo the light leak stuff. Uh, what's the other one I have? One of the other ones I bought, the damn thing, it's light meter is broke. Would have been nice to know that before I bought it. Um, you saw the medium format camera. Oh, see, that's really nice. A couple episodes ago, the medium format one. Um, Franca Solita camera. I mean, that one, the shutter is just dead just doesn't fire correctly there was another one and in that episode I talked up how I was waiting for another one to show up in the mail the adox or adox whatever the heck camera well, we're even gonna show that one because that was an epic disaster that one has so many light leaks and shutter issues it, it, it is just so basically I had like four cameras over the course of the last two months just poof, dead so when this my first SLR that I ever bought started acting up I was getting really worried I was like okay am I cursed what's going on here what photo gods did I piss off because nothing's working right let's look at what am I on here let's look at 17 here yeah I'm not I didn't even show you that adox adox however you pronounce it that entire shoot because it was just such a disaster at least I got something out of the Franca Salita but the other one holy moly it's a nice shot Ooh, a little too contrasty losing some image there we go it's not terrible let's look at that one real quick 25 We need to slightly rotate it a little bit, just a little bit, like that. And now re-crop that in a little bit. Really don't want to lose more than I have to. I'm going to go up here and do that a little bit more carefully. I don't want to lose the top of that door. Let's do this. We're gonna sneak something here. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna keep the top of the door frame. And that. Let me see, how much are we over there? Alright, I can get away with that. We're just gonna sneak something over here. We're gonna take the rubber stamp tool. We're going to make it a little bit larger. We're going to take a sample of that and we're just going to go. Nobody's the wiser. Let's 
just make sure there's no obvious lines there. There we go. Nobody knows what happened. All right, now let's take a look at the auto tones. Whoa! Hey now. Before, after, before, after. Wow! Look at that. Oh, I like that. Um, let me look at curves. Although I'm pretty happy with what I said. Wow. Okay. What if I adjust my depth of field a little bit here? I'm going to bring out the old blur tool and drop it down though to only like 20% and just blur that area down there a little bit so that th that area is out of focus. Okay. I don't know that I, I keep, I keep debating whether or not I would crop it in a little bit. You know? It almost works as a square image. Or at least a little less of what's going on over there. Like that. Yeah. Keep it like that. I like that. Very nice. Very nice. I'm glad I stopped there and just randomly took a shot of an old door. I guess that's it for the episode. I'm glad the camera is not dead. Um, check the batteries in your camera's light meters <laughs> after a decade, I guess, is the lesson learned there. I guess we'll call that the end of the episode. Uh, thanks for watching, as always. Like, subscribe, Etsy channel, store, all that kind of good stuff. And I will see you next time. I've been completely deleted because there have been nothing but issues lately. Um, Everything is underexposed, overexposed. Flip it back to you. Oh, I just want to know where I was.